Well, good morning, guys. Uh, good afternoon, depending upon when your class would be. Uh, my wife uh, suffered an injury this weekend, and I'm going to have to take her to the doctor, and maybe uh, it will take a while on Monday. So I'm going to record this lecture and allow you to watch it remotely or on your own time on Monday. And uh, while I would much prefer to be with you and enjoy that time, because I really do enjoy being with you guys in our class, I, uh, I don't know what exactly my schedule is going to be. I do know that I'm going to miss the morning class. And I don't know if I'm going to miss the afternoon class. So what I'm going to do is send out an announcement. Everybody will be able to watch this lecture. It'll be abbreviated, but it will introduce you to the idea of two-dimensional arrays. And that's what we're going to be about here. So an array can have two dimensions, and uh, what we're looking at is we, we typically already have a single dimension in an array, like a bunch of exam scores or weights or many of the other things we've been looking at. A two-dimensional array you might think of as having length and width, but more frequently you're going to hear it called rows and columns. Some people, sometimes people might say X and Y, but I don't, I don't do that. I, I use rows and columns the very most often. And if you look here, uh, let's see, I'm going to grab a pointer and hopefully that'll help a little bit, uh, a laser pointer. If you look right here um, where I'm pointing, this is not an element. This is a declaration of a two-dimensional array. And this array has four rows and 79 elements. Um, and if we were to do an array that was um, four rows and three elements, that's the array you would see right down here. And so the only thing we're doing really is changing our array by adding additional rows to it. And the rows are this first number now, and the columns are the second number. So if I come down here to this um, element right here that I'm pointing out, you see it's exams 1-1, one, one, and it's row 1 and column 1. Way down here, out at the far lower left, lower right, is exams 3 and columns 2. And so that's going to be row three across here, column two, and that's how we identify it. And so, for instance, I could have a bunch of names in an array where I'd have rows in the class and seats in the row, and I could put students' names in a specific place in the array. And maybe I print the array off and it tells me where people are sitting in class, which, of course, would be helpful because I'm so terrible with names. I got it. Go over here and go to the next slide. So here's another way of looking at it. It's almost saying the same thing. But here I'm using a constant to declare. And I've got a constant that says there are two rows and a constant that says there are two columns. And then I declare an integer array called exams. And there are rows and columns. Now what I'm showing here is how to initialize it. And what I want you to do is connect this 8478 with the first row. You see. Before we had curly braces and we just put our numbers in there, but now we're going to put rows inside another set of curly braces. So I have the first row, 8478, and that goes right here. And the second row, 9297, goes on the second row. And this is how you can initialize a, an array. Now, most two-dimensional arrays are going to be way too big to do this with, but you might have some times where it was possible. And so in that case, I, I just want you to know how to do it. I want you to have seen it happen. Where's that thing at? And here is a nested loop. Now, this is a big deal. I think I'm going to try to uh, do a little bit of uh, writing on this screen here so that we can actually see what, happened, what I've got here. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm going to have a pen here. There we go. Uh, so this is using a nested loop. A nested loop is when we have one loop inside of another. So here is loop number one. And if you notice, it's going to use a variable called row. And so this is going to be our row counter. And we're going to go from zero until we reach the number of rows in the class. And of course, we'll just increment the row. Now, inside of that, I've got another for loop right here. And this for loop is going to go all the way across the row, visiting each seat in that row. And when this loop is completely done, 
we will return back up to the outside loop and go to the next row. And so the inside loop is going to do the second number in the two numbers. This is going to be the inside loop is going to get these guys and go through them. The outside loop is going to increment through these. And we're going to hold this steady while we go through all of the seats. Then we'll increment the row number and go through all the seats in the next row. And so this is a doubly nested for loop. And right here inside this area is where you can see it displaying or actually reading the name of a student. And it says it's in row number row, seat number seat. And then here's something I want you to see. You can use CN and you can read the name directly into the array location. Okay, that's really important. A lot of times people will do CN into a string and then they'll say the seating location equals the string name, but you can short circuit that. Just specify the row and seat number and then you can use the array name directly. Okay, and uh, what there's another thing we have to think about and that is if we are going to pass a two-dimensional array. So let's say that this is a two-dimensional array here, this exams, and we're going to call a function called get exams. Now um, we have to pass it the number of columns, I'm sorry, the number of rows, and inside the function, now here's our prototype, this is what goes in the .h file, and you'll notice here I'm declaring an array, I should have had a, an, an array name there, that's a minus five for this lecture, uh, have the int a, and then I don't have to tell it how many rows there are, but I do have to tell it how many columns there are. So if you are writing a function and you're going to be passed a two-dimensional array, you must specify how many columns there are. You do not have to specify the first element. That can There can be as many rows, as few or as many as you want, but for each row you must tell it how many columns there are. That's an absolute requirement. So make sure you do that if you're starting to write a function. And so here's our header. We say it's a void function. We're going to get the exams. And I declare an integer array called exams. I don't tell it how many rows there are. I do pass it a value to tell how many rows there are, but I don't have to specify it here. This allows me to use different size uh, number of rows in the function itself, so I can call it with different values. But every func every value, every array that I pass does have to have the same number of columns. This is this is driven by the way this stuff is stored in memory. You don't have to worry about that right now. I'm not going to ask you about it. Just know when you declare an array that's two dimensions in a function header, you don't have to tell it how many of the first element number there are, but you do have to say how many of the second element element number they are. So um, you, something to think about, how many, how would you sum all the elements of a two-dimensional array? Well, you would just do a nested loop with a, with a sum variable, and each you would just go through all of the elements in the array using both loops, and every time you visited an element, you would add it to the sum and repeat it at the end there. Finally, we've got even three-dimensional arrays. We are not going to do a lot with this, but you should know you can have even four or five-dimensional arrays. And now we're just really just extending this idea. For instance, I've got a board that I'm representing, and it has three levels or layers, and each layer has an eight by eight matrix on it. And this could be like Spock's 3D chess here. I have layer one, layer two, and layer three. Each one has an eight by eight array. So there's eight by eight here, eight by eight here, and eight by eight in this top level. Or maybe you're doing an X, Y, and Z simulator where you're doing a three-dimensional curve in calculus or something. You can, you can represent that now by setting up an array and allowing each X, Y, and Z coordinate to represent a specific point within your array. And it's going to work exactly the same. Now, I will add one more thing. If you pass a three-dimensional array in the function header, you must specify the last two, the only one you don't have to specify is the first of the dimensions. So you would have to say exactly how many uh, elements there are in the Y dimension, how many there are in the Z dimension, or up here, if this was being up here, up here in the upper right, if this was uh, being passed inside the function prototype and header, I have to say 
there's eight rows and eight columns, I would not have to say how many layers there are in the function header. Of course, in the main, I would. All right. Okay. So this is where I would have stopped. We would have done a few more exercises, but hopefully this gives you an introduction into two-dimensional arrays. We'll spend a little more time on, on Wednesday, but this might help you get started. This will also help you start with the uh, program, the magic square program that's due next week. Um, note that in that program, you have to pass a two-dimensional array and get it back from a function. And so you'll have to use the information that we saw earlier in this slide deck. All right. Thank you so much. I hope I do get to see you on Monday. But for now, I'm planning that I will probably not be there. And I want you to watch this short video and then go ahead and start doing some of the participation and challenge problems. And also, if you want to, you can hack away at the at the lab problems as well. They should not be too difficult, I think, this week. Thanks a lot, guys. And I hope to see you very, very soon.